Hello everyone. Today I am presenting a video of zonular dialysis where you can see vitreous that was seen beautifully and where I went wrong. It is always very important to analyze your complications where you went wrong so that you can rectify that in your future cases. This was a hard cataract with that metallic sheen which I have discussed in my previous videos. Now see I would be trying dry chop. The tip exposure is seen beautifully. I buried the whole of my tip into the nucleus and when I tried to chop there was the rotation of the nucleus with the bag itself. See again this is a slow motion video. Again when I tried to chop there was the rotation of bag and probably this was the moment where I had that zonular dialysis. Now after completing the emulsification of the nucleus just see there is a blood clot at the side of a side port. I will be telling its significance later in the video and now when I completed my FACO you can see some laxity of capsule is visible. I realized that I have caused zonular dialysis. So at this point I changed my magnification to a higher level and injected visco to inflate the bag. Now you can see that hemorrhage which I was talking about is again seen beautifully. We will come to its significance later why I am talking about this hemorrhage again and again. So now after injecting visco the bag was inflated and I made another side port to help me insert CTR into the bag and now you can see that leading heptic is being passed into the bag and uh, you have to be gentle your rexis should be intact for inserting CTR as I have already described in one of my videos and it is actually easy with the help of two dialers to reposit that CTR because the only problem one faces is to put the trailing heptic into bag and see I lost it into the interior chamber then I again uh, engaged it with one of the dialer and the other dialer I am using it to reposit in the bag and CTR went nicely in the bag now there were some cortex left so I did all cortical aspiration till this point I was not aware that there is any vitreous disturbance as you can see the bag was inflated and the cortex was coming out very easily. So after completing the cortical cleanup I injected visco again and then I implanted the intraocular lens in the bag. My intention was to deposit the heptics again in the direction of dialysis which would support the dialysis portion more along with the CTR itself. The IOL was then reposited in the bag and you can see the IOL went nicely into the bag and after placing the IOL in the bag I would be continuing with my irrigation and aspiration so as to remove visco from the interior chamber still see the pupil on one side now if you can see where there is a clot where there is a hemorrhage that side the pupil is a little bit more dilated so something was fishy there which I didn't realize at this point also and then as I removed my cannula you can see the aisle started shifting to one side again I tried to close my wound as I thought that everything is fine but then again uh, when I went to this side port I found this clot fishy again and then I went with a uh, butt swab and now you can see that clot is engaged with a thread like fluid see again that clot is engaged with a thread like fluid and that is the reason why my lens was shifting to one side because the vitreous was coming from zonular dialysis site through this port outside now see how beautifully those vitreous stands are seen and that clot is now inside the interior chamber. Now again when I am sweeping there is the fourth strand that is coming in. Now I will count these strands which are there in the interior chamber. 
it see how beautifully these vitreous stands are visible even without staining with triamcinolone it's 1 2 3 and 4 i'll count again 1 2 3 and 4 and this is the blood clot which was outside engaged admixed with the vitreous now it is in the empty chamber so now you can see since i have brought that vitreous back into the empty chamber the iol is not shifting to one side and this was something which i was missing that there was vitreous in the port which was pushing the iol to one side now the other side port which i used for repositing my ctr through that and through another side port i would be continuing with by manual anterior vitrectomy it should be a closed chamber anterior vitrectomy and now you can see this is my irrigation cannula and with this side port i inserted my cutter as i told in my previous video also that the direction of the cutter should be up and now with anterior vitrectomy this vitreous strands were removed and uh, see those vitreous strands are being removed with the help of cutter and you should always go for a closed chamber vitrectomy through two side ports and now the vitreous tags were removed the anterior vitrectomy was continued until the whole of the vitreous was removed now with my irrigation cannula inside i am with the cutter cutting any vitreous if it is there in the ports and now back into the anterior chamber the direction of my cutter is up and i am moving closer to the port so that if there is any vitreous strand which is passing from vitreous cavity outside through the port that will be cut and now the vitrectomy was almost completed iris repositor was swept into a tear chamber to check for any leftover vitreous but you can see there is no vitreous there is no movement of the iris which again confirms that there was no vitreous left now at this point i went in after lowering my bottle height to remove visco from the tear chamber After removing visco I injected pilocarpine to check for any leftover vitreous this is a double check mechanism just in case if there is any vitreous left so it would give rise to peaking at that point but you can see the pupil has constricted nicely and now this intraocular lens was in bag with anterior vitrectomy done and now the wounds were closed finally Thank you for your attention.